Hey everyone, welcome to Couchbase Coding with Matthew Groves. This is a 10 minute slice of my day as a developer advocate, live on Twitch every day at Matthew D. Groves. Check out old episodes on YouTube, send me questions and comments on Twitter or email. Today, I'm going to walk you through some of the code samples I've been working on for an upcoming blog post. And this blog post is mainly about optimistic locking and pessimistic locking in Couchbase. So if you're not familiar with those, uh, maybe we'll go through some uh, samples here. I'll make it uh, a little more obvious what that actually means. Uh, this is not something that's specific to Couchbase. It's locking is something that uh, uh, you hear, you see in every, lots of databases. So I'm already seeing a chat here. I don't, don't hear any sound. Well, that's not good. Why isn't the sound coming through? Oops, sound is there. Okay, so it looks like you probably had it on mute. Thanks, Nick. Uh, one other thing to point out here, if you look right below the screen, I've added a new uh, chat plugin. Uh, it's called uh, CapChat. So that's going to be a better uh, chat experience there, I think, for the stream. All right, so what I've got here is I've got Couchbase uh, Enterprise 5.5 running locally on my machine here. And I've got one bucket set up here called My Bucket, very creative name. And there are no documents currently in this bucket. I've also got one user set up called Matt, uh, who has a full admin uh, access, so he can do anything he wants to. Uh, so we'll go back to documents here. Now I'm going to bring up Visual Studio. Also, change the resolution based on comments yesterday. This is a 720p resolution, so hopefully it's a little more readable on the screen here. But I've got just this very simple uh, .NET console application here. Just one file, program.cs, with a main in it. And the first part of this main is just setting up the Couchbase cluster. So I'm connecting to localhost here, authenticating with my super secure password of password, and opening the my bucket. And then I've got four samples here. I've got one example of optimistic locking and two different examples of pessimistic locking. And I probably won't cover durability today, but there's another example in this project. This will all be in a, a future blog post, by the way. Okay, so let's go over to optimistic locking. So optimistic locking, the way this works is that you use optimistic locking, it's sort of a lightweight lock. It kind of assumes that the document you are going to be working with is not going to be in heavy contention. So if you think of a database as being connected to multiple different applications, and they're all contending for the same document. They're all trying to read or write the same piece of data. And so you may want to implement some sort of locking so that it's predictable and you can achieve some level of isolation against that one document. So uh, my example here is, first I'm going to create a baseline object. I'm calling it my, <clears throat> my weapon. And this has just a just a plain basic uh, C sharp object here. This will get serialized to JSON as you'll see in a minute. But I'm describing my weapon. It has offense level one and its name is Excalibur. So maybe I'm creating some sort of, um, I don't know, role playing game or something. And my weapon is uh, starts out level one. And now something in the future happens and I want to upgrade that weapon to a higher level. So maybe I'm purchasing uh, new apps on the, on the mobile site, or maybe on Steam, or, or some other way. There's multiple ways to access this document. So we're going to assume that for this sample, there's two different processes. There's process A and there's process B. Now in my example code, it's only one single console app uh, that's single threaded. But the, it's going to demonstrate um, in a basic way how A and B would contend for this document. So we start out by saying, OK, uh, process A is going to get the My Weapon document. All right, and it's going to get information about that document, including the document value, which is, as I set up there, Offense Level 1 and Excalibur. OK, and then let's say there's a process B that's doing the same thing. It's going to get the document and get the value. And so at this point, both A and B have the exact same document and uh, the optimistic locking key here is this CAS property. Uh, it's the CAS value. It's on the result itself. It's not on the actual value of the document. It's on the result of the operation. So the CAS value, CAS stands for check and set. This is just a number. Uh, I think it's an unsigned integer that Couchbase stores with every single document. 
And that number will change whenever a document changes. But right now it's the same document, so both A and B have the same CAS values. So you can see here that we can, as we run this program, it's gonna be the CAS values are currently the same. All right, so let's assume that A process uh, is the faster process. So it's going to uh, go first. It's going to update the document and change the sword to have an offense level of two. So we're getting an upgrade here. And then once that uh, object is updated in C-sharp, we want to actually update it in Couchbase as well. So I'll do the bucket.replace operation on this key, my weapon, with my new updated C-sharp object that will get serialized to JSON. And I'm also have to pass in this CAS value, which basically tells Couchbase, here's the CAS value I know, make sure it matches the CAS value you currently have. And that's going to occur because we only, we only have A and B right now. Those are the only two processes. This is going to be successful. So A makes the change and the sword is now upgrade, upgraded to level two. All right, and so now there's going to be a new CAS value because the document changed. Now we go over to the B process. It tries to make a change as well, but it only has the old CAS value, all right? So it's going to try to update uh, to level three. So in C-sharp, that works fine. You just set the object to level three. When we get to this replace operation, though, in Couchbase, we're going to do a replace on this key with the new uh, updated JSON, and we're going to pass in the old CAS value. So it's going to check and compare that to the, the CAS value in Couchbase. It's not going to match. Therefore, this change is going to fail. So this operation will not go through, and my sword will not go to level 3. And so what I could do if I wanted to retry this, I could then have B go out and get the object again, get the new CAS value, and try uh, changing the offense level to three again. Uh, and since we're being optimistic, we're using optimistic locking, that might be a good strategy because we're assuming that the sword doesn't get upgraded very often, right? It's just, uh, we're optimistically assuming that there's not much contention for this object, so a retry might be fine. But hypothetically, we could keep retrying and retrying indefinitely, right? The the A process, if it keeps updating the sword, the B process is always going to be one step behind and it's going to be locked out. So uh, the alternative to optimistic locking, so I'll close this one down, is pessimistic locking. So here's the first example of pessimistic locking. And what we do now is, well, I'm going to do a shield this, this time. We're not going to do a sword. Actually, let me go back here and run this example so you can see how this works. And I'll, I'll debug through the optimistic example. So we'll start right there. It's just a console app. So I'm running uh, a console app as debug. So there's the, move this over here, move this over here. So it's going to uh, insert that weapon. So once I go past that, if I bring up the Couchbase console, and we should see that the my weapon document is here name excalibur offense level one okay good and we go through this step getting a process is getting it b process is getting it and they both have the same cas value so it's kind of a small font there but you can see it ends in 312 and b also ends in 312 so those match so the cas values are currently the same right up here okay so a is going to try to make a change first it's going to set the offense level to 2, and it's going to try to persist that into couch base with the CAS value. And I think we can actually see the CAS value over here in the document. Maybe not. Uh, let's see. Uh, that might be this. No, I don't think it's this revision. Uh, maybe the CAS value is not uh, exposed in the UI, which is fine. We don't actually need to know the CAS value. Um, if you need to know the CAS value, maybe you're doing something wrong. Uh, okay, so A is going to update the weapon to level 2, and that's going to be successful here. Success equals true, and change by A was successful. There's a new CAS value now. Notice that it ends in 4, 5, 6. Okay, now B is running slower. It's going to try uh, to attempt to upgrade to level 3, So, but it's going to use the old CAS value. It ends in 3, 1, 2. So updates the C-sharp object, tries the replace, passes in the old CAS value, and it is not successful here. You can see result.success equals false. And so therefore, change by B failed. The CAS value has already changed. That's the message you'll get back. So at this point, I could do a retry or whatever else, but uh, I'm just going to end the sample there. 
and show you how we do it with a pessimistic lock. And we're about 10 minutes at this point. So maybe we'll come back tomorrow to talk about pessimistic lock. Uh, so sorry I didn't get through all that. Um, but I'm going to be on the Swift Kick Show later today, if you want to check that out. That's at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. Uh, Swiftkick.in, I think, is their main website. Uh, I think it's Team Swift Kick on Twitter. So check that out, and thank you for watching.